Hi, this is Steve Carlson. Um, a little thing happened to my computer on the way to filing this suit uh, to force myself into the debates, which i quite sure I have a legal right to do. I also need to sue to get voter email addresses and also to, uh, to question and challenge and remove the quota system of so-called proportional representation that the Democrats have insisted on doing and which is skewing elections, but most importantly of all, violates the 19th and 15th amendments of the United States Constitution. Because you can't abridge or deny anyone's right to vote in our precinct caucuses on account of their gender or their race. And admittedly, it does violate it. So let me read to you just a little bit of what I'm doing here. I am going to file this, but I'm forced to work off of my computer. And fortunately, I've found a way to make a simple movie which I'm posting for you here. So here's a little of what I am uh, bringing to the Minnesota Supreme Court as an election petition. Uh, I am Stephen Carlson, Steve Carlson. I'm an individual eligible uh, registered voter and winner of a statewide primary held by the Minnesota Independence Party for U.S. Senator. And I'm filing this petition seeking declaratory and injunctive relief. I've got three counts. Now, in addition to the new circumstances uh, which have occurred in this election of wrongful exclusion and omission from all publicly broadcast de uh, candidate election debates, which is count one, uh, where I had been included as a candidate against safe Democrat Representative Betty McCollum in 2010 and 2012, there are the unconstitutional practices that this court, the Minnesota Supreme Court, declined to address when uh, these issues were brought after the election of 2012 in an election contest. Now these wrongful and unconstitutional practices continue to pollute Minnesota's congressional elections because this court refused to decide or allow those issues to be properly decided in Carlson versus Ritchie, 830 Northwest 2nd, 887 from 2013 which opinion also misstated those issues, which I will state clearly for the court. Those grounds are restated here being further their irregularity in the conduct of an election or canvas of votes and on the grounds of deliberate, serious, and material violations of the Minnesota election law. Now these criteria are the basis uh, in the context of this petition for counts one, two, and three. And according to 204B44, which is election petition law in Minnesota, I may bring this petition, quote, for the correction of any of the following errors, omissions, or wrongful acts which have occurred or are about to occur. Now, these two upcoming debates in October 26th and November 2nd for U.S. Senate are about to occur. That's an example of trying to get them to enjoin uh, these broadcasters and their collaborators to open up under the U.S. Constitution and also the congressional statutes of the equal time provisions of the Federal Communication, well, the Communications Act of 1934 as amended. That, by the way, is 47 U.S.C. 315. And so I'm bringing this action also under 42 U.S.C. 19. 83, which is violations by state officials who are Secretary Ritchie and the Minnesota State Canvassing Board of constitutional rights. Since they violate my rights in denying use of voter email addresses and subject me to the abridgment and denial of the right to vote or participate in the DFL precinct caucuses. Now I count the United States and Minnesota constitutions as regulating Minnesota election law and thus as part and parcel of those election laws and binding on this court. However, in the 2013 decision, this court adjudged undemocratically that it will not allow these requirements of free and fair elections to be enforced if brought in a contest, notwithstanding that under state law, reflecting the U.S. Constitution, Minnesota statutes, uh, I believe this is uh, 2 0 9.12 Congressional Office required that, quote, 
when a contest relates to the office of senator or a member of the House of Representatives of the United States, as that race against Betty McCollum was, the judge trying the proceedings shall make findings of fact and conclusions of law only upon the question of how many uh, votes were counted. But evidence on any other point specified in the notice of contest, including but not limited to the question of the right of any person to nomination or office on the grounds of deliberate, serious, and material violation of the provisions of the Minnesota election law must be taken and preserved by the judge trying the contest or by some person appointed by the judge for that purpose. But the judge shall make no findings or conclusion on these points. And they're supposed to have sent this to the House of Representatives. But they made a political decision to block the entire process, which is it violates the U.S. Constitution, violates the Minnesota statute, basically put themselves above the law. So this court sullied the CD4 election in the 2013 decision by refusing to ensure this law was able to be carried out as mandated and impermissibly made the findings that Betty McCollum was the winner, notwithstanding the contest that was timely filed, and would be injured by my delay in raising the constitutional issues I raised in the contest and incorporated into the 2012 petition. They are presented here, again, but concerning the 2014 U.S. Senate election, because they have continued. And so I am putting this together. I will be bringing more information about why the Minnesota election law incorporating the U.S. Constitution and the uh, Communications Act requirements of equal time uh, are grounds to enjoin uh, Mike McFadden, Al Franken, and the broadcasters, uh, WCCO-TV, and NPR slash American Public Media, which is based in St. Paul, to open those debates up so that I can talk directly in front of a broadcast audience to Al Franken and Mike McFadden about the issues of importance to you, the voters. I'm Steve Carlson and I approve this video and we'll have more soon.